The grace and love of our Lord and Savior be with us always. Amen. The word of God we want to consider today is the beginning of our gospel reading for this past Sunday, the third Sunday after the Epiphany. We're looking at Mark chapter 1, verses 14 and 15, where Mark writes, After John the Baptist was put in prison, Jesus went into Galilee proclaiming the good news of God. The time has come, he said, the kingdom of God is near. Repent and believe the good news. My dear friends in Christ, our reading is from the very beginning of Jesus' public ministry. He had just shortly before this been baptized by John the Baptist. And, and after being baptized by John the Baptist, he was led by the Holy Spirit out into the wilderness where for 40 days he was tempted by the devil. And during those 40 days, what Jesus did is he showed his great power over Satan as he used the word of God against any temptation that Satan sent his way. And Jesus stood firm, defeating the devil at the very beginning of his public ministry. Sometime after Jesus' temptation like that, what ended up happening is that John the Baptist ended up being imprisoned because he spoke to King Herod and told King Herod that it was wrong for him to be living with his brother's wife. And, and because John the Baptist was imprisoned, well, Jesus chose to leave the area around Jerusalem and the southern part of Judea, Judah, and head to the northern portion of Galilee to get away from Herod. And, and he also went up there, especially then, it says, Jesus went into Galilee proclaiming the good news of God. His message led his first hearers back to the scriptures, to the message that they had heard when they went into the Jewish synagogues, the message that they had heard about Jesus the Savior, a message which some of them did understand to some extent. Already when Jesus was an infant, when his parents took him to the temple, Simeon, an elderly believer, he is described as waiting for the consolation of Israel. And Anna, another aged believer, an aged child of God, she spoke about the child to all who were looking forward to the redemption of Jerusalem. Their faith was based on the Old Testament promises of God, the promises of the Savior, like the one in Deuteronomy where the prophet Moses said to the people, the Lord your God will raise up for you a prophet like me from among your own brothers. So when Jesus now proclaimed, the time has come, the kingdom of God is near, those who knew their Old Testament scriptures, they were looking for Jesus, the promised one. Maybe they didn't understand at this point in time that that Jesus in front of them was the promised one, but that's who they were looking for. When Jesus said, the time has come, the kingdom of heaven is near, what he of course meant with those words at that particular time is he was saying that, he was saying that right at that time, the savior, he himself, and he, that he had finally come and that he was going to be going to the cross and he was going to be accomplishing their salvation. He was going to complete or fulfill God's promise to Adam and Eve that he would crush the serpent's head. He would defeat the devil. But today, Jesus is still speaking those words to us. He's still saying, the time has come, the kingdom of heaven is near. The, the Apostle Paul, he told the Corinthians, 
I tell you, now is the time of God's favor. Now is the day of salvation. The time has come. The kingdom of heaven is near because right now you and I have the opportunity to hear God's word, to be shown our sin, but then also be to be shown the answer, to see Jesus the Savior, the answer to our sin, to see him as the promised one. That promised one was and is still calling people to repent and believe the good news. And when we hear that phrase, repent and believe the good news, understand really that that's all talking about one bit of action, one complete action there. And see now, it's the change of heart that the Holy Spirit works in the believer's heart when he calls us to faith, when he makes us believing children of our Heavenly Father. It's the acknowledgement that we are sinners and that we deserve eternal punishment, that we're sorry for our sins, but then also that we look to Jesus for forgiveness and that we look to the Holy Spirit for his help to fight against our sin, to live as believing children of God. Oh, many years ago, there was a prominent underworld criminal figure who attended a, a large religious crusade. And at that crusade, he heard about Jesus. And when he learned about Jesus, he professed a faith in Jesus. But as the months passed by, he still remained the prominent underworld criminal figure that he was. When he was confronted by that fact, the gangster said that no one had told him up front that, that he'd want to change his life, that he'd want to get rid of his criminal ways. After all, he reasoned that there were, well, he said they're Christian football players, they're Christian cowboys, Christian politicians, and he figured, well, why couldn't there be a Christian gangster? Only when they explained to him the need for repentance that, well, when a Christian believes in the forgiveness of sins that he also wants to correct his sinful life and live as a believing child of God, only when he heard this, well, did he decide that there really wasn't anything in Christianity for him. He wanted nothing to do with Christianity. And really, what that ended up saying, of course, is that tragically, there must never have really been a faith in his heart because his heart wasn't changed. He didn't look to the Holy Spirit for his help to live as a believing children, child of God. Believe, being a believing child of God, what we'll want to do is repent and believe. And again, remember that really is one and the same action. It's worked in our hearts by the Holy Spirit. It's sorrow for sin coupled with rejoicing in the forgiveness of sins we have in Jesus while also looking to the Holy Spirit for his help to live as believing children of God. So as Jesus said, the time has come. The kingdom of God is near. Repent and believe the good news. Your sins are forgiven because of Jesus. Amen. Let's pray. Dear Lord Jesus, help us always to confess our sin, to rejoice in your forgiveness, and look to the Holy Spirit for his help to live as believing children of God and as heirs of eternal life in heaven. We pray in your name, dear Jesus. Amen. In the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God the Father 
and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you always. Amen.